In Creole Parametric, the Advanced Framework Extension allows you to create steel and aluminum structures with different shapes of beams. Let's take a look at how to use that. Here I am in Creole Parametric. I'm going to click the New button to create a new structure. And for simplicity, I'm just going to call it Structure. I'm going to use my default template. Let's make sure that I choose Assembly over here. Then click the OK button. And now I'm going to turn on my datum plane display. Let's take a look at a couple of different options in here first. If I go to File and then Options and then Configuration Editor, there is a config option called AFX Enabled that enables you to use the Advanced Framework extension. The default value is yes. And in assembly mode, I have this framework tab that gives me access to the different commands. If you don't see the framework tab, just go to file and then options and choose ribbon and make sure that you have framework enabled in the design assembly mode. Let's cancel out of here. The basis for your frame is going to be a bunch of curves or points. And you could create those curves and points as assembly level features, but I prefer to do it in a skeleton. So I'm going to do that. Let's go to the model tab. I will click the create button. And in the create component dialog box, I'm going to choose skeleton models, what I want to make. Here's the default name that Creo Parametric is suggesting to me. I'm happy with that. So I will click the OK button. Now in the Creation Options dialog box, I'm going to copy from existing. Here is my standard start part. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And it automatically gets located in the model. I am not going to use any of my assembly default datum, so I'm going to hide them. Here I have my skeleton model. In order to create my features inside of here, I will click on the skeleton model and then activate it. So I'm going to make a structure that's about 20 feet tall. Let me verify my set of units. I can go to my model properties. Normally you get to that from file, prepare, model properties. But I use this command so much that I also have it in my quick access toolbar. And yes, I verify that I am in inches. So I'm just going to create a couple features to begin with. Let's start off by creating a new datum plane offset from this datum plane. Let's drag it up and I want about 20 feet tall. So let's change this to 240. That's good for the plane. I'm just going to hit the OK button or middle mouse button. And for the first sketch that I'm going to make, it's going to be the top on here. So with the datum plane still selected, I can hold down the right mouse button to bring up my quick my mini toolbar. You can see that the keyboard shortcut for creating a sketch is letter S. And for my frame, let's use a center rectangle and just drag it out about yay big. And I want it to be 40 feet long, so let's change this to 480 and 30 feet wide, so I'll change this to 360. So that is good for this particular sketch. To get out of sketch mode, I can hold down the right mouse button and then click the check mark from the menu. And that is the first part in here. And at this point, I'm going to create a bunch of other sketch geometry and some other datum points. So I'm going to put a cut in the video right here and we'll come back when the rest of my skeleton is complete. All right, now I am back. I just have a couple sketches in here that include some curves and some points and mirrored it about the mid plane. So I'm going to use these sketches in my skeleton in order to define my framework. Let's go back and activate the top level of the assembly. You can do that by using Control A or clicking on the top node in the model tree and then clicking the activate icon. So that brings me back to assembly mode. Now I will click on the framework tab and here you see a bunch of different commands. We're going to start off by creating a new project then putting in a bunch of profiles for the different beams inside of here. And then we are going to put in some basic and advanced joints. So first off, I'll start off by creating a brand new project. 
and for the name of the project I'm just going to call str for structure not feeling very creative in my naming today now I'm ready to put in my various different profiles for the beams I will click on new profile and here we get the select from library dialog box so you can see in here we have some steel beams in millimeters we have steel beams in inches some sheet metal beams and a bunch of folders from different companies so for example from Bosch you get these profiles for six and eight and ten let's take a look at Kanya and so you can see the various different profiles that they provide in here Rose Krieger I like Rose Krieger because they provide a lot of CAD files on their website and so you can see some of the different shapes that we have in here in the library to use but I am going to start off with some steel beams and I'm using inches and the first ones that I'm going to throw in here are going to be some I beams so I will click on that and here we have the element definition dialog box there are various different tables that you can choose from and I'll use some AISC it's like the American Institute for Steel Construction or something like that and I'm going to use the W shape which is like the wide flange beams and I prefer decimals rather than fractions and here we have the different sizes if I select the first one up here you can see the size of the beam so this is 44 inches Wow, this is like four feet I don't want anyone that big let's scroll down in here I'm gonna choose roughly like some one foot I beams so I'll select that one and I can see that the base of it is about 12 inches the height is about 14 inches yeah that's good let's use this one so I will click the OK button and I'm going to use that as the vertical members in here so here we have the new profile in here I'm happy with the selection here you could choose a different material if you have one I don't have any materials defined in here so we'll just use the AFX default material and then click the next button and this brings up a dialog box for positioning it and for doing it you can put it on some straight curves or edges you can also assemble between two points that's why I have the points in here and also you can do it on a bend curve but I'm just going to use some straight curves and also a couple of points so let's start off by putting one in here and there you can see a preview of how it is positioned in here for orienting it you have these different buttons for how exactly you want it located on the different sketches and by putting in here right now it's going to end up right in the middle of the sketch and I'm fine with that but I want it rotated so let's rotate this 90 degrees and that's the way that I want the eye beam oriented in the model so that is good for my first one I can click the OK and then repeat the process but here you just have a repeat button that allows you to do that over and over so let's choose repeat in here and now I'm going to select this particular curve and just like before I am going to rotate it 90 degrees let's choose repeat you can see that is a pretty quick and easy process for getting the different members in here so let's choose this one as well again 90 degrees yep happy with these orientations so now I will click the OK button for the top frame I want to use a different shape I don't want to use I beams so let's click on this button and instead I want to use some rectangular tube and for the rectangular tube I want them to have a width of bigger than 12 bigger than what my I beam is let's go in here let's try this one so I got a height of four now let's try this one so I got a width of 16 height of 12 and a thickness of 0.5 yep I like this one let's click the OK button and then click next in the new profile dialog box and again I'm gonna place them on curves in here so I will select this curve and uh, I don't like the orientation of it in here so let's rotate it 90 degrees yep I want it on the wide side and instead of having it in the middle of the curve I actually want 
this to be the top height. I wanted my structure to be 20 feet tall. So I actually want this oriented so that the middle top of my profile is located on the curve. So that is good for that one. Let's click the repeat button and I'm going to put it over here as well. Just like before, let's rotate it and position it top middle. That's good. Let's repeat and do it for this one. Rotate and top middle. Yep, that is good. And one other different location over on this side. Let's re rotate top middle and that's good and click the OK button. And I'm going to close this for a second just to show you some of the stuff that you see on here. So we have these different annotations showing the kinds of beams that we have on here. If you don't want to see them in the In Graphics toolbar, you can click on the annotation display to turn them off. Also, you'll notice that right now we can see that we clearly have interference between the different members. Don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that when we go into doing basic and advanced joints. Now I'm going to put in some other different beams here between these different points. So let's choose to do a new profile. And instead of doing rectangular tubes, I want to use some channel beams for this one. And for the channel beam, let's see, I am going to use AISC V14, uh, C for channel. And let's see, for the width of this, uh, let's go with 12. And then this is going to be a value of 3. Uh, yeah, that's good. Let's click the OK button. And then click the Next button. And this time, instead of using curves, I'm going to assemble them between points. So I will select this point over here. And then that point over there. And... It looks like it's oriented the way that I want. I wanted the flat part of the C up top. So that's good. I don't have to do any adjustment to the location in here. Let's click the repeat button and then change the method to point to point. I'll select that point there, this point over here. And again, the orientation is correct. So I can click the OK button. All right, those are enough beams in here for now. Let's take a look at using the joints in order to get them the right lengths. And so first off, here I can see that I have interference between my first eye beam and this particular rectangular beam. So let's go to basic joints in order to fix that. I'll click on basic joints. And here we have some different buttons. I'm going to create a new joint. And here are the different options that you have in here. So I'm going to join both profile ends. Actually, in this case here, I'm going to use a T-joint. So I'll click on the T-joint. You can see it indicates what components to, fit, to pick in what order. So I'm going to select component one is going to be the I-beam and component two is going to be this one. And you could probably have told that it adjusted the length appropriately. Now let's repeat that three other times. I'll click the repeat button and let's select this component is number one and this one is number two. And the length gets adjusted. Let's repeat and select this one and this one. That's good. And one more time, hit the repeat button and this component and this one over here. And that one is good as well. Uh, let's click the OK button and you can see that, you know, again, it adjusts the different lengths in here. Now we'll take a look at the vertical beams. And for the vertical ones in here, let's do basic joint. And first on this side, I am going to do a joint like this where we're going to have a corner joint. And in this particular case, I want these ones to be the ones that get longer. And this is the one to get shorter. And so it gets adjusted on that side. And you can see the icon that we have in the graphics area to indicate that. Let's repeat this. And again, I want this one to be extended and this one to be shortened. And it gets adjusted. 
that is good let's click the repeat button and this time on the other side I am going to change it to a miter joint and for the miter joint the order really doesn't matter let's select this one and that one and they get mitered together and then let's repeat and select the other two beams and we get the miter joint over there so I'm really happy with how this is coming along for the other beams in here actually before I do that let's reduce the screen clutter no longer need my points no longer need my skeleton display so we can hide that but down here we have some interference between the models between the I beams and the channel beams and so in this particular case I am going to do an advanced joint so I'll click on advanced joint and in the button the box over here we can find a new joint and this one is going to be a cutout and since I'm going to place some connectors and equipment in here later on I'm actually going to do a cutout with offset and so I'll check the box to do an offset and let's put in a couple inches of offset and so then for the cutout option here we're going to select the model to cut and I actually want to cut the channel beam and the reference model for the cut is going to be this one and so that's good and you can see how now there's no longer interference and there's space in there for me to put in my various connectors between them later on let's hit, hit the repeat button we're going to do that a few more times we will select this model to cut and this one to use for the cut and repeat and this model to cut this one for doing the cut and lastly repeat again this model to cut this one for doing the cut and then click OK if you take a look at the model tree you can see that we have a number of different parts the naming of this part comes from when I defined my project it's using those letters str that I have for structure and then the naming of the components you also notice that it's generating various different datum features like datum points and coordinate systems as necessary so in this way I've gotten a steel structure created in just a few minutes and in later videos we'll take a look at how to do various different connectors and equipment inside of here I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded thank you very much